Hello and welcome to X-Plane 11 everybody. And for those of you that have been following the channel, you know that I've been flight simming since about 2001, but mainly on Microsoft flight simulators. And it was only a couple of months ago that I picked up X-Plane 11, and it's an absolutely fantastic simulator. I highly recommend it. And this video, I'm going to run through five tips that I've learned myself in the short time that I've been playing the simulator, and you might find them useful also. Now, I bet there is a ton of other tips out there, so use the comments below, throw some tips that you've learned playing the simulator in the comments below, share it with everybody. Also, smash that like button if you do enjoy these sorts of videos, and if you're new, have a think about subscribing. It costs nothing at all except a little bit of self-respect. So with all that said, let's get into five tips for beginners for X-Plane 11. Okay, tip number one here everybody, and here we are in the default Cessna 172, and this is something that popped up in the very first flight that I conducted, and if you look at the top right hand corner there, you get a little error message saying the directional gyro is not aligned with magnetic north. So that's saying our directional gyro here is not aligned with our compass or with magnetic north. So, one thing you can do is you can go and adjust it manually here and make sure it matches your compass right there, or the easiest thing to do is just press key D, bumper. you can see that it moved right down there, press that and away you go. Very important to change this by the way because particularly if you're using the GPS right here and you've got it on GPS mode, if you start flying out there without your compass and your directional gyro not being calibrated, your GPS will think you're going one way and you'll actually be going a different way. So do not get caught out on that. Okay, tip number two, everybody. There is a heap of data that you can display on your screen while you're flying, and it's really easy to bring up. All you do is go up the top here, go to the little settings uh, tab right there, select data output, and as you can see here, a whole lot of information that you can tick here, and it will then show you that data in the cockpit, essentially. So let me show you one that I use all the time is weather so if I go weather there and go done boom up the top here I then get a weather readout now at the moment I've got conditions set to calm but it will show you the speed of the wind and the direction it's coming from it's just quite good just to check that before you take off particularly if you haven't got real world weather set or something like that it just makes it nice and easy to get an indication of uh, where that weather is coming from now, what you can do is that's just some of the information you can put in there. You can put your frame rate. I mean, we talked before about having your directional gyro set correctly. And there's a uh, one of these uh, modes down in here. You can select that. And so it will tell you what your magnetic north is. Um, I can't find it right now. So that is absolutely brilliant, isn't it? There it goes. Magnetic compass. Boom. If I select that, done. Magnetic compass 24 0.82 we look on here 24.82 that's about right so that's where it should be set so if you don't want to press D and you want to do it manually set it to 24.8 which is essentially 025 you can set it right in there so yeah heaps of data windows that you can throw up the top left hand corner there frame rate wind whatever you want and you're going to get access to quite a bit of information okay tip number three in some aircraft, if you press the number keypad and press all the different numbers, it will go to all different sorts of views within the cockpit, and they're pre-programmed on some aircraft. On others, they're not. Um, so even if they are programmed, you can actually choose your own views and save them, or if there are no views, you can just create some new ones. So let's take the Cessna 172 that we're in right here. Now let's say that we want to actually have a view similar to this that we can just quickly flick to. Uh, because we want to look at our fuel selector or do some trim or maybe adjust our throttle or our flaps or something. So what you can do is just using your mouse or whatever you're using, just zoom in or out till you get the right view that you want and then just hold down control and press a number on the keypad. In this uh, situation, I'm going to press number one, holding down control, pressing number one. Now I've got the views set on my joystick, so I'll just go back to our cockpit. Now if I press number one on the keypad, Boom, it just goes straight down there. So let's just do that again. Boom, easy as that. So just hold control and select 
the view. So let's just do another one. Now you press Y, here's a little free tip, Y to get rid of the yoke, that's pretty well known. And say it's this one here, which is a common view you might want to get into where you want to start playing with the switches and your beacon, your landing lights, your taxi lights. So I'm on this view here, hold down control, press two on the number pad. So now let's go back up. If I press number two, we go down to that view right there. Press number one, we flick across to that one. And you could set another number pad to go back into the default cockpit view, but I've got that on my joystick. So once again, pressing one gets me down to that view, two there. And you can set a view anywhere in the cockpit that you like. So if you want to look out, look back like that, look up there, whatever you might want to do. I don't know why you want to look up there. But you can set those just by holding down control, pressing the number pad, and for that specific aircraft it will be set. So when you jump into another aircraft, you're going to have to change your views to suit your, your own uh, preferences. But there you go, tip number three. Okay, tip number four, everybody. How do you install new aircraft? It's really, really easy and explain. Uh, down here, of uh, so I've downloaded the Just Flight Cessna 152. I've unzipped the file and I'm left with the folder here. If we quickly go in, you can see it's got all the info there. But what I do is I just simply copy this or cut it, whatever you want to do, then... You just simply find the main directory of Xplane. For me, it's under Steam right here. Go into Aircraft. And then, as you can see, I've already got in there, but you just right-click and paste it in. And it is as easy as that. Just paste the whole folder into your Aircraft folder in Xplane 11, and you are done and dusted. What you can do is, if it's a Carinado aircraft and you want to keep them all under the same folder, you could put it in the Carinado folder. Uh, otherwise, you can just uh, cut and paste it straight into the aircraft folder and then it will show up in your menu when you go to select your aircraft in X-Plane. Really, really easy. No need to have to put separate things in separate files. So there it goes right there. Get into it. And the final tip, everybody, is how you can make your simulator look a lot better with a couple of free pieces of software. The first one you're looking at right here is called Airport Environment HD. Once again, it's free and uh, it makes your runway lines, uh, all the taxiways, uh, all those sorts of textures. It just improves the look of those. And I'm just uh, showcasing them right now. You've got concrete looking ones, as you can see on this picture. And there goes a concrete type runway. So a great free add-on that you can uh, upload into your simulator and you'll have your runway and taxiway and gates looking absolutely sensational. And the second thing you can download to make your X-Plane look absolutely brilliant is Ortho for XP. By the way, all the links are down in the description for these pieces of software. This is another free piece of software. It downloads photorealistic scenery anywhere in the world. We're looking at just outside Auckland Airport right now. And uh, just be aware that it does take up quite a bit of drive space, although you can adjust the quality to make it a, a smaller file space. But hey, it comes out absolutely sensational and it's free. You can't go wrong. But uh, there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Five tips for beginners in X-Plane. Put your tips down in the, in the comments. Uh, subscribe if you're new. Like it if you like this video. And until next time, take it easy.